prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Our opening hymn is the second advent, number 91. People look east, so please stand. <laughs> And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. 
And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. as the Prince of Peace, this Advent, as we strive to become the best version of ourselves, fill us with a deep uh, and a bidding peace. Help us share that peace with everyone we encounter, especially those who need it most. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the book of Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, and the lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples, the nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our psalm of response is Psalm 72, and I'll read to the Astrich if you will complete the verse, please. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously, and the Lord of justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people, and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressed. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be no more the moon shall be no more. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with the Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. And again he says, 
Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise you. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn this morning is number 109, When the King Shall Come Again. Please stand. Sandals. 
He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. That's quite a start. That's, uh, that's an attention getter from John the Baptist. You know, people are coming out, wanting to be baptized in the River Jordan. And he calls a group of them, two groups of them, in fact, you brood of vipers. That's, <laughs> that's nice. Thanks. Thanks, John. Thanks for coming out. Um, I want to I unpack that because it is. It's a shocker. You read this and you think, well, it's not very Christian of John the Baptist to be like laying into these people. No, why? Why, why, would he, why would he call them out in public? Well, it's a, a lesson to them and a lesson to everybody else who's within earshot. But I want to, we hear these names all the time. I, I want to unpack, you know, what's Sadducee? What's, what's Pharisee? The Sadducees were this uh, elite level class. They were the high priests of the temple. So they had a lot of power over the people. And they were politically connected. They were well off and they all knew each other. So it was these families that were kind of, you know, well set up in the society. The trouble with the, fair, the uh, Sadducees was that they didn't really care who was in charge as long as they sort of were in there. So they didn't have a problem with the Roman occupation as long as they still kind of held sway. And spiritually, as far as that goes, they were, they were deists. Now, deist is sort of the fancy term for, in this context, people who believe that God, in fact, did create the heavens and the earth, but now largely had nothing to do with it. So like the watchmaker, set things in motion, gave the rules, and then kind of backed off. That's the way Sadducees saw the universe. And they focused in on the Pentateuch, the first five, Torah, the, the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That was the extent of what they believed in. And they didn't believe in the resurrection of the body and things like that. So they were an elite class. They had, from you can get the impression, a bit of contempt for the average person on the street. Thank God these elites don't exist in today's context. Um, we, we also have Pharisees. Pharisees are more interesting. I have a lot of sympathy for the Pharisees, I've got to tell you. And, and Jesus has a go at them a lot. But I'm going to explain exactly why that is. Because there's a, there's a really important... It, it's, it, you could pass over it as not being important, but it's very important flaw in the way they saw things. So the Pharisees probably had a number around five, 6,000, give or take, people in Jerusalem or in, in Judea, in that area. Uh, middle class, sort of merchant traders... They believed, as opposed to the Sadducees, they actually believed that God had a part, had a hand in their day-to-day -day lives of his people. And that your faith could be practical. And so they were missionary. And they went out, they tithed, they gave, they were very pious about it though. But they still, they tithed, they took care of the poor. All good, you're thinking, well, that's, that's not bad at all. They believed in the resurrection uh, to eternal life from the dead. Uh, unlike the Sadducees. Now, this is where we get into where there's a problem. So I'll give you one example here. I'm gonna, I'll go back to Exodus uh, 28, which is in um, the Ten Commandments. So, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God, and you shall do no work. You, your son, your daughter, male or female slave, livestock, or the resident in your towns. No work. You think, okay, that's pretty straightforward, God's law, right? We've heard this many times. What the Pharisees did was they added on to this to help people out, oral laws. So, for instance, the Pharisees said, you can't look into a mirror on the Sabbath because then you're going to tend to think about your appearance and comb your hair and you think, that's work. You can't do any work on the Sabbath. They also set a rule for the people that you couldn't walk further than three quarters of a mile. Walking any further than that, that becomes work. If you have a fire in the hearth and the fire goes out sometime during the day, you're not allowed to relight it. 
because relighting the fire would be work. Now these oral laws, that, and there was many, many of them, they added in, the Pharisees added in to help the people connect more with God. And here's the problem, is they gave equal weight to God's law and the laws that they came up with to help to follow God's law. Problem, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 4. You must neither add anything to what I command, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. And further, assemble the people for me, and I will let them hear my words, that they may teach their children so, and their children's children. Don't add anything. You don't need to, if, if it was a law that important, I would have given it to you myself. The Pharisees felt that that was equal. And it led them astray. This is, a, this is something, a lesson that needs to be in our hearts constantly as Christians. Because our churches, our denominations, the worldwide church, we can set up rules for ourselves to help us follow God's law. But we have to remember always, God's law, all of it, all of it has primacy over what we think is the best thing to do. There are going to be times when you look at something and completely and vehemently disagree. There's going to be parts of Scripture you're going to hear and you're going to, you're going to, your heart's going to rebel at it. I don't agree with that. Well, guess what? It's not for you to agree or disagree. It's God's law. It's for you to wrestle with. We're supposed to wrestle with it. If you're in a room full of people, and all of you agree 100% of the time, let me tell you, you've probably had a race to the bottom. And now you're so milk and water that there's nothing at all offensive or upsetting to anyone. Nothing to get you like kind of fired up or passionate. You're not talking about anything. Nice weather we're having. Yeah, it's nice weather. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Right? Nothing. God's law, Scripture, is meant to be wrestled with. It's meant to be challenging. When John the Baptist says this to the Pharisees and Sadducees, it was meant to shock them. And he said to them, listen, you're coming here for repentance, for the forgiveness of sins. That's fantastic. That opens you up to God's grace, the Holy Spirit, to infill what you've got rid of, your sin. So that you can go forward. But make no mistake. I'm a human being. I can help you by baptizing you. For the repentance of your sins. But no human being. Can put themselves in God's place. The Holy Spirit's place to transform. That's the work of God alone. In Jesus Christ. And that's why he says. The one who is coming after me. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. I can prep the ground. But he is the gardener. That's going to plant the seeds and make them grow. Don't make the mistake for me. And by extension, don't make the mistake for yourself that you're in that place. That's not you. I find this all fascinating. I want to go back here. When we, when we look at, I, I, when you look at scripture, find the part that's most challenging to you. Go after that one first. Go after that one first and, and break it apart and say, okay, why, why? Or, or if part of you says, oh, I really don't like that, why? Why, why, why? Why, why are you rebelling in your heart against that scripture? And approach it that way. Look at, look at our, our reading from Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. All good. The spirit of counsel and might and of knowledge. Fantastic. And the fear of the Lord. Wait a minute. Fear is a bad thing. Nobody wants to be fearful. Nobody wants other people to be living in fear. That's the sort of thing that we, as civilized people, try to eliminate. Why, oh why would we want the fear of the Lord? And then the next sentence, standalone sentence. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. What on earth does that mean? I'm going to give you, I wrote this down because I can't think of a better definition than this. Listen to this. The true love of man for God, 
creates a sense of anguish at the very thought of moral evil, revolt, rebellion, or compromise. The true love of man for God creates a sense of anguish at the very thought of moral evil, revolt, rebellion, or compromise. That is the fear of the Lord. Of what we can at any moment become if we allow it. And if we stray. You know, you know there's talk in, in the New Testament of you know, outer darkness and the wailing and gnashing of teeth. Friends, you've got to choose to go over that wall. Nobody gets arbitrarily just picked out of the crowd and tossed over the wall for fun. You've got to fight. You've got to fight hard to get over the wall into the darkness of wailing and gnashing of teeth. How do you get there? Pride. I know best. The rules I've set up, you know, this was good in the past, but we're an advanced people now. I know, I have a degree from university. I have two degrees from university. And you know what they're good for? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, so what? Compared to the wisdom that's found here, if, 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 if I can allow myself or, or put myself into this position that, that John the Baptist was helping people to get into it, of humbleness, asking forgiveness of sins, readying themselves to accept. And here we read it in Second Advent because it's readying our souls, ourselves, for the coming of the Christ child, the Holy Spirit, alive in the world. And if we can do that in, in humbleness, then everything gets opened up for us. But as soon as we start to think that we know better than what's here, like the Pharisees did, we become Pharisees. You know, the Bible's a good starting place, but I've realized in my four-year philosophy degree from Carleton University, and God bless you if you got that, that's a fantastic degree, um, <laughs> that I know better now. My political science degree, my, my liberal arts degree, uh, you know, I know better. And I know I know better because I spent $40,000 on it. <laughs> right? So, obviously I know better. Sorry, I, 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 I don't mean to denigrate, you know, higher education. Well, I do. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> so, for, for Second Advent, please take the messages of John the Baptist trying to shock us by extension through, through time. Shock us with this phrase, brood of vipers. Are we ourselves Pharisees? Are we ourselves just coming in humbleness? To the river, or do we have an agenda we've set up and rules that we've set up that, that supersede God's law? And if we do, we need to push those aside and be totally open to what Scripture has to teach us. Otherwise, if we're full of our own things, there's no room for the Holy Spirit.
what's going on. I'm talking to people here, they're telling me, they're going, no, it's the creed now, and I'm like, sorry. Please stand. <laughs> Honestly, I know what I'm doing, it's okay. Standing together, let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Lord, and head of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. Lord Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings will keep silence before you, and all peoples will summon you to their aid. Come, set us free and delay no more. Lord Jesus, come soon. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut. You shut and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. Lord Jesus, come soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness, come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Jesus, come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creature you fashioned from clay. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, Lord our God. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Prince of Peace, you have shepherded your flock and stretched out your hand to offer us your protection. For those in leadership who govern our country, guide them in your righteousness. Lord Jesus, come soon. And we pray for the members of our parish family. This week we remember Trayton and, and Joyce Jensen, Stan and Judy Johnston, Diana King, and Nicholas Curry and Diane Wilkinson, Reverend Lee, Sherry, Abby, and Jack Lambert. And for those who are sick and in need of healing, we pray for Rita, Diana, Judy, Dorothy, Gloria, Sarah, Lorna, Bill, and any others that you may wish to remember now, either silently or aloud. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and he is infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you all. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. God, our strength, we are nothing without you. Receive all we offer you this day as you sustain us with your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in the fullness of time came among us in our flesh and opened the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge this world, that we, without shame or fear, may rejoice to behold his appearing. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, 
the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. <clears throat> we may have here today that all baptized Christians, regardless of your home church or your denomination, are welcome to receive the Eucharist here at St. Thomas. It's Christ who is the head of this table, and Christ who wishes to encounter all of us in the breaking of bread and the sharing of life. Please stand. us with this heavenly banquet. Help us always to hear the prophet's call to turn our hearts to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. As you go forth into the world today, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may they see Christ's face in you. For the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, quite a few notices again this morning, so I'll work through them. Lots of dates to remember. Uh, so, fund script orders, um, as you know, that's a way of raising funds for the church, and uh, it's a great gift, so there's a the plug. <laughs> and today is the final date to get the order in by 9 o'clock tonight, and you can email Nicole Dalloway, the information's in, in the notices, or Jody. I'm not sure where she is, there she is, or Jody can help you with those as well. Uh, Christmas flowers, uh, anybody wanting to donate to Christmas flowers, you have until Tuesday, December 20th. And there are white envelopes in the narthex, uh, which you can return to the office once you've completed. 
place on the collection plate will give to Arlene. And Arlene, I think, is there at the back of the church. Uh, the online auction, uh, that silent auction closes on December 10th at 8 p.m. So just a few days to get your final bids in. The online bake sale, that's now closed. And you'll be notified when you can pick up your items. The ACW Christmas Luncheon, uh, just a reminder for all the ladies attending that, that's tomorrow, December 5th at noon at the Glen. And I guess you could watch the soccer as well as have a lunch. You know. <laughs> Um, the angel tree, which is at the back of the church, there are still a few angels to be claimed. Uh, so if you could pick up an angel and return it and the cards to the containers by next Sunday, December 11th. And those, uh, those gift cards then go into Christmas food packages through the food bank. Uh, the Comfort Bags Initiative, uh, the information again there in the, in the bulletin, the last day to submit donations is tomorrow, uh, December 5th. And I, I know there's been a good response to that so far, so I, I'd encourage you if you haven't donated to, uh, to try and do that. Uh, the name tag board, right at the back of the church where Diane is. Um, if you've often wondered who it is you're sitting next to, and that applies to me particularly, as I'm terrible on names, but good on faces, uh, we have a name tag board, but it needs to be updated. So if you could take a moment, take a look, see if your name's there. If there's not a name tag for you, if you could uh, let, uh, the, let the office know, let Carolyn know there. Uh, let her have the correct spelling, and we can get those uh, name tags uh, put together. Also at the back of the church, and I'm sure you know, there's a memorial board there and a memorial board that side. Um, we're actually looking for somebody who's crafty, somebody who can work with wood, because we have a number of those uh, in memorial plaques that need to be mounted onto a board. And so we were looking to see if there was someone who may be interested in perhaps making one of those boards for us. If you are, please contact me. Um, we can figure out how we, how we do that. The Santa Claus Parade went off yesterday, um, in spite of the weather, I, I understand that there was a uh, let up in the weather and so the parade went ahead. I understand from Sherry that over 850 bags of candy were distributed and it was very, very well attended. Uh, I guess the dentists of the uh, looking for some works. So. Uh, the giving envelopes for 2023, uh, those envelopes are in the council room um, if you want to collect them. Obviously if you're on the PAR system there are no envelopes so nothing to collect. If you'd like to switch to PAR please contact Bob, Bob Lomas, um, he, uh, his information is in the bulletin and uh, he can set you up on the PAR system. Now a plug for our daily bread, that is available to all parishioners, there's no charge for this, it's on the table at the back and I think Susan will be there, uh, there is a large print, I think Diane's actually there now holding them up, uh, there's also this, uh, this little book with forward day by day, that does have a suggested donation of $5. So just to make sure people are aware of those at the back of the church. Uh, in terms of another book, Advent in Narnia, uh, Sally Gad has uh, been running a course which started last week and was, was great and the books actually came in during the week. And I understand Sally has six of those books uh, which are available at a pretty reasonable sum of $15 each. Uh, Cash, please. <laughs> um, I think that's it. I, uh, Cheryl and I are doing coffee and uh, some goodies this morning, so please join us downstairs. Um, before we finish, I know Merrily would like to just come and have a word for a minute. So thanks, everyone. Hi, everybody.
everybody. The pageant is coming up soon and it's coming very, very well. I think you'd all enjoy it, so please mark your calendars for December 18th at 11 o'clock after the first service. Um, they, there are still some places if anybody wants to take a part. Um, we're having a rehearsal today at 11, and for everybody in the rehearsal, just meet at the front of the church here in the pews, and we'll do our first total run through. And it's going to be very, very exciting. So I hope everybody plans to attend and bring your family and friends. All right? December 18th, 11 o'clock. Thanks. Uh, special thank you to uh, my wife Sherry and everybody else who helped uh, uh, putting all those bags together. Um, in, I just wanted to point out, inside the candy bags were, was a card that told people about our Christmas services. So it was, a, it was like an invitation and we were trying to give them to families with the kids and so hopefully that will bear some fruit and, and we have people show up. But I want to thank the Smiths and everybody who helped with that. So anyway. sing again. Our recessional hymn is number 88. Come now long expected Jesus. Please stand.